Alright y'all, so stop. Don't use the M2 Mac Mini that you guys just bought without these accessories or honestly, you just using it wrong. In this video here y'all, or in my last video, we talked about getting you guys right with choosing the right M2 version, whether it's going to be the Pro model or it's going to be the regular M2 model. But in this video right here, I want to actually talk about some of the best accessories that I personally think is going to pair well with your brand new M2 Mac Mini or your M2 Pro Mac Mini as well. So we we're gonna go ahead and talk about monitors in this video. We're gonna talk about the best keyboards, the mice, the speakers, external hard drives, and even, you know, maybe some other little secret stuff that I've been using as well. So stick around for that. Also, I wanna tell you guys real quick, y'all, I'm making updates to the studio literally every single video. I just finished this wall that's right here behind me, y'all. I think it turned out pretty dope. It took me forever to make. Now, I am gonna be dropping my studio tour video here pretty soon on the channel. Now, if you guys are signed up for my text message list, then you guys are gonna know all of my giveaways when they're gonna be announced, unreleased music that I create, uh, so that way you can get it before anyone else does. Also, new video drops. You're gonna know when the studio tour video drops, new merch, all of that sauce is happening up in the group chat. So if you guys wanna see a sneak peek of the full studio, then go ahead, man, and text Room21 right now to the number that is on the screen right here. And just like that, you in there. Just like my last video, man, I want the people that's already in the group chat right now, go ahead and comment down below right now, hashtag Room21 in the comments. And uh, let's go ahead and get this video cracking. So one thing, one thing if you guys didn't know and you guys are new into the M2 Mac Mini world, you guys are gonna need to buy a monitor. You're gonna still need to buy a keyboard as well as a mouse. Now these are the basic things that's gonna get you guys up and running. So let's go ahead and start with those. Now when it comes to monitors, right? It all really depends on your use case, right? Meaning if you guys are a video editor, you're gonna need a different type of monitor than someone who may just wanna use it for a casual browsing the web or somebody who's a gamer. Now the monitors I use are the LG 34 GN 850B ultra wide 34 inch gaming monitors. Now I own three of these because overall they just good monitors and I purchased these monitors because I personally wanted something that was gonna be a good mixture between like gaming on them as well as a good mixture with editing on them because obviously I edit a lot of videos and didn't wanna buy like separate monitors for that. Now, not everyone is a fan of ultra wide monitors and I get that, but for me, I don't think I can actually go back to anything else because once you go ultra wide, I promise you, man, everything else to me just seems just way too small. Now, I will say this, if you guys are a gamer and you got a little money to spend, then personally, I would check out these two monitors, which is LG's latest monitor, which is the 45GR95 QE OLED gaming monitor. Now, I will say, I got a chance to actually see this monitor in person at CES this year, and it is 240 hertz on an OLED screen, just, Chef's kiss, y'all. <laughs> Behind me, I got the LG C2, which is also an OLED, and it's honestly my first OLED that I've ever owned. And I'll tell you guys what, once you experience OLED, everything else just, it just don't look good anymore. Another good gaming monitor that you guys can check out is the Aorus FO48U or the FV43U by Aorus. Now, I personally own the FO48U model, which is the 48 inch model, before I traded up to my OLED C2 behind me. Now, if you guys are the person that's not really a gamer and you're like, well, see kid, I just need something that's going, you know, just kind of be good for color accuracy as well as being able to edit on, then I was easily, easily easily say the Apple Studio Display. Not gonna lie to you, it's a little pricey, but I promise you it's some of the best color accuracy that you can get out there on a monitor for that price. That's why I personally use my laptop for color accuracy when I'm grading my videos and stuff like that because it's the same high res display that I'm getting on a studio display on my MacBook Pro. Now, another option would be the LG 27 UL 504K monitor and the ASUS ProArt PA 329CV 4K monitor. Now, both of these monitors is gonna handle all your editing needs and just casual browsing as well. So, now that we have all the monitors out of the way and all the crazy model numbers, uh, which will all be listed down in the comment section as well as the description section below. Now, let's go ahead and switch to which mouse that you guys should be using. Now for this one, there's really only two that I would personally recommend. The default one is obviously gonna be the Apple Magic Mouse. Now, depending on your desk setup and you know, however you wanna get it set up in your space, you can either go to space black version or you can go to white version. Now overall, 
it's a solid mouse that has a ton of different features that are specific to Apple products because y'all already know Apple just loves to integrate their products well. Now my personal mouse that I use on a daily basis and to me is the GOAT. It's the GOAT of all mice and that is the Logitech MX Master 3. Now this mouse here y'all I love because it has in so many ways just so many features and you can customize it to your computer experience that just takes it to a whole nother level. Like I can customize each button to be able to work in a certain way. For example, when I'm in Final Cut Pro and editing a video I can literally just have my scroll wheel do one thing have the two side buttons where my thumb is do other things and all of that then if I'm in the web like on Chrome or Safari, I can have those same buttons be able to go forward and back within a browser without having to go to the back and forward buttons in the browser. So overall y'all, either one of these mice is gonna be good for you, but the MX Master 3 is where it's at. <laughs> All right, so next we gotta pick out is a keyboard. Now again, when it comes to a keyboard, there's like a ton of keyboards out there that you guys can get. But for me, these are the three that I personally recommend. And the third one is one that I'm gonna be getting here in the studio pretty soon, which I'm hyped for. So the first one is the obvious one, which you can go with, which is the Apple Magic Keyboard, which to me is actually like my top keyboard that I actually like because uh, it has like the touch ID so you can use it to be able to log into your computer. You can log into like your banking or different applications on it. It is so dope to have a built in uh, fingerprint reader on your keyboard to be able to log in and all that stuff. So highly recommend you guys check out that keyboard as well. Now the second keyboard is another one that I use which is the Logitech MX Keys. Now this is another good keyboard that is backlit as well. It has really good key travel as well as the buttons on it are concave so that way like the keys just fit perfectly within your fingertips overall it's a good keyboard you can also pair it to three different computers by just pressing these buttons here that's on the top of it and then from there you can switch it to whichever machine that you guys may be working on at the time and it's just gonna switch right over instantly pair up and you are good to go now this third keyboard y'all this third one I'm not gonna lie is one that I ordered and it's by a company called ASIO now I first saw this keyboard here on Instagram and yes Instagram got me with the ads. I'm not gonna lie, it worked. <laughs> now it is a mechanical keyboard and it is also Bluetooth, so no wires and it looks good y'all. It's so clean as well as it matches my setup really well and was something that I just had to get up in the setup and I'm looking forward to checking this bad boy out. All right, so really after that, you pretty much have everything you guys need to get you guys up and running on your M2 or M2 Pro Mac Mini machine. Now these next things are if you guys wanna take your Mac Mini to the next level. So the first thing that I recommend you guys get is some sort of external hard drive. Now the one that I use for the M2 Mac Mini is this unit here that allows you guys to install a SATA SSD on the inside expanding your storage. Also, you have multiple USB-A ports on this thing that's right on the front and then you also have a micro as well as normal SD card slot which is clutch for being able to transfer in data because on the M2 Mac Mini as well as the M2 Mac Mini Pro, you don't even have an SD card slot on this thing, so you will have to get something to be able to do that, and I'll link that down in the description section below as well as in the comments section for you guys to check out. Now, another one that I use is the Samsung T5 or the T7, which is also good, and what I use sometime to be able to edit my videos from. They're fast enough to be able to handle 4K video uh, when I'm editing on. Now, I will be honest with you guys, both of those drives, whether it's the Samsung T5 or the 7 or even the SATA SSD one, they will be slower than your internal storage on these machines here, but it's still a good option without breaking the bank. Now, the next thing that I need you guys to get is some desktop speakers. That's not necessarily going to break the bank. Now, the ones that I use are the Edifier E25s, which honestly has been my go-to speakers for a few years now, and they sound solid. They can also be connected via Bluetooth, or they can also be hardwired in using the 3.5 millimeter audio cable. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, the best way to actually use these speakers or to be wired in or keep your device close if you guys are using uh, the Bluetooth connectivity as I'm be honest the range is just not that great with it if I'm being real with y'all another item another good item to get which is I'm not gonna lie it's not really necessary for you guys to have but it's been clutch for me and it's best if you guys want to be able to connect up multiple monitors and only want to use a single cable that's going to run right into the back of your M2 Mac mini now for this 
I recommend you guys get your hands on the CalDigit TS4. Now this thing, y'all, is like a dock for your computer on steroids. It's got multiple Thunderbolt ports. It's got a display port. It's got multiple USB-A ports as well as an Ethernet port. And if you guys want to save a few extra coins, you can check out the TS3 model, which is just as good, but you know, it's got, it's got less ports on it. So I highly recommend you guys check out this product. It's the best way to not have so many things plugged directly into your M2 Mac Mini, but instead you plug everything into that dock and then you just use one single cable, plug it right into your Mac Mini and it's be able to power dual displays and other things that you guys wanna run into it. I promise y'all it is the GOAT. Now the M2 Mac Mini for the price is one of those computers that I personally feel is the best on the market today, especially for the price what you're paying for it. Now I've been using this machine here for about one week now and you know if you want to find out if it's something that i plan on upgrading to or not you can check it out in this video right here uh, okay m1 it started off basic well, just go and copy m2 mac mini is so elated but ain't it kind of